You're watching Stat News Global. I'm Amita Bravi. And joining us now from uh, Bonn is Senior Research Fellow at the Russian History Department of Bonn University, Dr. Zaul Gasimov. Dr. Gasimov, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Dr. Gasimov, just wanted to get your views on uh, the uh, claims from the Armenian side yesterday that uh, uh, Turkish F-16 had shot down uh, Sukhoi 25 inside Armenian airspace. Uh, now, Turkey and Azerbaijan are denying that. But it seems like things, instead of de-escalating, are escalating. I mean, um, um, around the around the conflict uh, uh, during the last uh, two three days, uh, there is an um, an abundant uh, flow of information uh, on uh, international uh, engagement in the region of uh, of uh, foreign countries of countries uh, being out of region. And uh, what we lack, uh, what we lack, is a sort of an international uh, observer's mission in the region in order to know more about. Uh, and who is uh, fighting where um, and so on. But um, um, at the moment, uh, I guess uh, uh, what we can, the information what we, what we have uh, from the official statements, uh, both in Yerevan and in Baku, um, we, we can only say that they are very, very controversial. But the situation, it's, it's not improving at all. Both sides are continuing to claim, like you're saying, there's no independent verification of what's really happening on the ground. Both sides are uh, blaming each other and uh, hostilities are not in any manner stopping uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan saying that shelling is occurring from the international uh, uh, boundaries of Armenia or Azerbaijan, which seems like it's escalating the situation. It's not just along the line of contact in Nagorno-Karnabakh or Astrak, or however you'd like to call it. Um, you know the the situation is. Um, and I mean, uh, we, we had a Minsk group. Uh, Minsk group yeah. was founded in ninety two. Uh, uh, it was a group co chaired by France, uh, U.S. and Russian Federation, um, under the auspices of the OECE of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. And this group, the Minsk group, was and is responsible for peaceful resolution of the Karabakh uh, of the Karabakh conflict. And uh, the uh, activity of the group uh, remained uh, very inefficient, and that yeah. is one of the aftermath of this uh, inefficiency. Um, the uh, Europeans, uh, particularly France, uh, was not quite active in the region in the last uh, decade. The same goes also for U.S. And this vacuum um, is now filled uh, by uh, Russia which became uh, the most significant player in the region, um, having very interwoven, very, very uh, tense relations, very um, multi-layered relations, both to Armenia and to Azerbaijan. It's the Russian Federation, which has uh, its uh, air base on Armenian soil uh, in Gyumri and close to Yerevan. And, um, um, that was uh, that was a, a Russian uh, minister of foreign affairs who owned uh, his uh, Armenian and Azeri counterpart, the Turkish as well, uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, but uh, the contact between uh, between France, U.S. and Russian Federation uh, with regard to the uh, peaceful solution of the Karabakh uh, issue at the moment uh, are, um, are quite quite uh, weak. And uh, I guess uh, one of the one of the uh, important approaches would be to strengthen the means group with participation of U.S. and France again, and uh, maybe also um, activate uh, the uh, UN and uh, mm -hmm. United Nations organization and uh, just uh, make the solution um, as intensive as possible in order to to stop the blood. Sure. Uh, Dr. Kazimov, as you're pointing out, uh, at this current moment uh, and in uh, history also because of historical reasons, Russia is significant, very significant, first among equals in the Minsk group, so to speak. But how would you read uh, the Armenian Prime Minister's latest statement, Nikol Pashinyan, saying that uh, there's no question of Russia mediating as long as uh, fighting is continuing with Azerbaijan? Um, 
I'm, I, I wonder about that uh, because uh, it was just uh, yesterday uh, that both the president of Azerbaijan, uh, Ali, as well as the prime minister of Armenia, Nikol Pashinyan, uh, uh, took part on the talk show um, as invited guests um, at the Russian television, um, um, Russia One, and uh, they shared their views, their standpoint uh, on the issue. Uh, shared with with the Russian audience. Uh, I mean, you can uh, you should just imagine it's Merkel and Macron who call who phone Yerevan and Baku, and in the same time, um, uh, the both presidents of both countries uh, just joined the talk show on the Russian television. That shows uh, quite quite clear the asymmetry within of the of the um, of the Minsk group, and uh, that shows uh, who play the key role um, in, a, in an eventual solution. Explain a little uh, bit to our viewers uh, the uh, relationship also now, um, which has, is, is historic between Azerbaijan and Turkey, which has leaped to a new dimension now we're seeing in this latest conflict. I mean, um, 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 Azerbaijan and Turkey, they um, have been cooperating uh, since uh, three decades quite closely yeah. in uh, many fields, uh, particularly in the field of, uh, of um, uh, economy as well as uh, military-related um, uh, fields, uh, and um, uh, to a big extent, this cooperation took place within of uh, NATO Azerbaijan cooperation. And um, I mean, they are uh, linguistically uh, linguistically bond with each other, and. Um, um, that is um, quite quite uh, intensive cooperation also in the field of uh, education, in the field of mutual investments, um, uh, and so on. But how do you see it geopolitically? We we know what President Erdogan's uh, nationalism, both domestically and internationally, has uh, resulted in an overreach, some would say, of Turkey, uh, and with uh, reports suggesting that um, military equipment is being provided. The Armenians saying that military experts, Turkish experts, are fighting alongside Azerbaijan, again accusing an F-16, Turkish F-16, of being used. Uh, is Turkey trying to make uh, its reach even longer in, in, in this region? I, I have the feeling that uh, Turkey tries to play a more active foreign policy and not only in the region of the Caucasus, but also in the region uh, of North Africa and in the Greater Middle East. And uh, Ankara goes um, uh, very often, um, uh, very active, uh, um, but hand in hand, uh, with some, to some extent, uh, also with uh, Russia. The interests very often are, are quite different, but a very interesting dynamic uh, emerges that uh, Ankara and Moscow uh, demonstrated their ability to cooperate uh, quite yeah. uh, in, in uh, Syria. Syria. There is some coordination uh, with regard to Iraq, to Libya. And uh, I guess, I, I thought that in, in one of the previous interviews that uh, I can imagine that uh, Russia would cooperate with Turkey, uh, maybe also to some extent with uh, Islamic Republic of Iran, uh, in the Armenian-Azerbaijan conflict as well. And uh, that fits quite well to the Russian view of its uh, new role in Eurasia and in the greater Middle East. So it's about, it's about uh, cooperation with regional powers, with regional uh, uh, key players, in order to oust uh, the Western presence uh, from the region. So you, so you don't... Uh, sure, go ahead. Syria and and, uh, yeah. and now I see uh, quite quite clear uh, <laughs> quite clear uh, of the same procedure uh, in the Caucasus as well. So you don't see Turkey and Russia being on opposing sides and being drawn into this uh, conflict uh, to exacerbate it. There is a difference in approaches, of course, and there is a difference of interests, particular of long-term different uh, interests, but um, there is a huge deal at stake. And uh, I guess at the very end, Russia and Turkey would find their way 
to cooperate with each other and uh, to somehow respect the mutual interests. As I've told, it is a case in Syria and um, that could be applied again in the Caucasus. Like you've been pointing out about the Minsk group over decades, nothing has really happened. Um, how do you visualize, if at all, this reaching some kind of a solution? Because Armenia is fine with the status quo in, in terms of the line of contact with uh, Nagorno-Karabakh or Asrak. And uh, Azerbaijan has this historical grouse uh, of losing territory. So how will this immediate uh, conflict be uh, resolved for both sides domestically? With particular this question, I guess uh, all the um, uh, all the uh, specialists of the uh, OECE should be preoccupied uh, all these decades. <laughs> and uh, you know, there were um, hundreds of meetings uh, of the co-chairs, the high-ranked diplomats uh, on US sides uh, from France, from Russian Federation, and um, I guess this kind of frozenness of the conflict uh, fitted quite well uh, to the uh, to the policy um, of of all players. You had sort of uh, you had a, a ceasefire. You had uh, all the time actually uh, sort of shootings on the both sides, uh, but it was a very very low intensity uh, uh, conflict. But uh, it was clear that uh, one day uh, the the uh, the refrigerator would go wrong, so the the, the conflict wouldn't stay frozen anymore. And um, uh, what we see that international community, on the one hand, failed completely to find a solution. On the other hand, actually uh, did uh, uh, did less uh, in order to be prepared for that. And uh, I guess. That should be uh, that should be changed somehow, and um, uh, much more presence of the uh, international community is needed at the moment uh, of UN uh, as well as of the Minsk group in, uh, in its classical composition with US and France, of course. Sure, in conflicts uh, in the modern era, we've seen it's not just warfare on the ground, and as you point out, it's information warfare, it's disinformation warfare. We, we really don't know what is, uh, is actually happening. How much credibility do you give to reports from both sides? The Armenians accusing the Turkish of bringing um, terrorists or uh, mercenaries from areas like Syria. The Azerbaijanis are denying that and saying that uh, the Armenians are bringing Kurdish fighters or, or YPG fighters from the area. How much credence do you give to that? Uh, I mean, um, I, I can just uh, second your uh, second your uh, uh, fears and doubts uh, somehow that, I mean, um, so far we don't have um, international observation possibilities in the region. And um, it's quite difficult, quite difficult to say anything uh, precisely on that. I mean, definitely we have uh, taken into consideration what is told uh, both in Yerevan and in Baku, and uh, uh, work also with uh, with uh, with uh, Russia, Turkey, uh, whoever else who is engaged at the moment uh, in 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 the uh, diplomacy. Uh, but um, at this stage of the warfare, uh, it's quite difficult to uh, to to uh, act with the with the uh, solid uh, solid information and data on that. Dr. Zahur Gasimov, appreciate your time and expertise. Thank you so much. Thank you. And just for our viewers, a reminder, you can log on to our website to get the latest news and analysis from an Indian point of view to send us your feedback or questions or comments on our social media handles. And if you like our kind of journalism, do support us on our website. You've been watching Stat News Global. I'm Amitabh Brevi.